YouTube world, students of EO3 Classroom. Here we go. This is the final video in the set of, I guess, the intro to AutoCAD architecture. We're going to be talking about how to make elevations. And uh, the last video, if you didn't finish that one, was about the wall section, which you need to know in order to do this one. In this video, you will follow along with me as we create the front elevation, which is what the house looks like from the front. It's going to be this right here. You are then going to create the left elevation on your own. I will allow you to copy the decks and the porches. Everything else you must make. I'm not sure if we're going to go and do the right and the rear elevations. We'll figure that out uh, later on. But for now, since it's, I guess, June 7th, we're just going to do this together. It's going to take you about two days, and then we're going to do that one on your own. Okay? This one might count as the final project. So you got to make sure that you really pick up on this and learn what you're doing. Because, of course, final projects count as 20% of the entire grade. So you got to be careful with that. Okay? So here we go. What is an elevation? An elevation is what the house looks like from a specific side. So if I'm looking at the front elevation then that is the front of the house. If I'm looking at the left, that's the left of the house, right of the house, rear of the house, okay? Um, it's important to note, I should have said this earlier, that when you have a full set of plans from an architectural firm, what you're gonna have is you're gonna have a floor plan, you're gonna have a floor plan with electric on it, so that's gonna be an electrical plan, you're gonna have a floor plan that has uh, structure, so that's your structural plan, and then you're gonna have your elevations, front, left, right, rear. So there's a lot of different things that go into these plans, and of course you have all these notes too, things you know that are saying specific things about the house and materials to use, how to do certain things. Um, but those are the main core things that you're going to see in a set of plans for a house. So I'm going to explain now how to do these elevations, and what's very convenient for you guys is I already have it completely set up for you. So you'll see that what I'm telling you with all these arrows is these are the things that you're bringing down in order to draw this. And these are the things, these quick reference lines, that you're bringing across to draw this. Together, bringing them in together is what's going to give you everything that you need to draw an elevation. Okay. So what I did was down here, I have that all set up already, and you just have to draw yours right in there. All right. So what's important also to say is everything has to line up very specifically. So if this is the left side of the house right here, the very left outside, and that's the very right outside, that has to line up down here. Not with this, because that's the roof overhang, but with the outside of the wall over here and the outside of the wall over here. The ground has to line up with the grade, you know, approximate grade. That's the same thing as saying the ground. That line has to stay consistent throughout all of these views. The only time that wouldn't happen is if you had a house that was on some kind of hill. Then it would be different from each side, okay? Um, one of the things you should probably do right off the bat is go like this with a big blue box, because I don't know if your file has this or not. But, and if you see these boxes like this, just type ungroup and hit enter. And then I would say do it again. Ungroup, enter. So now it says group exploded, which means that all this stuff is probably a part. Um, now I can see this one. Oh, yeah, that's the hatch pattern. That's fine. So only because I group some of my things to keep it together and make it easier, but it does make it a little bit more difficult for you when you're trying to look at my stuff. Okay. So here we go. How would I do this? I'm looking at the wall section. You guys saw that in the video yesterday. What I take away from my wall section is I get my quick reference lines. I'm getting the uh, height of the first floor. I'm getting the top of the windows. I'm getting the top of the garage door. All that stuff simplified right in here. Okay, so what you're going to do at first is you're going to take a construction line, which is X line, and we're going to do this tool a lot. And you're going to draw a line across for the grade. You're going to draw a line across for the top of the foundation. Obviously, the top of the first floor doesn't matter anymore because we're not looking inside. We're looking at the outside. Uh, we need a construction line for the 7-foot height of the garage and for the 6'8 height of the top floor. Uh, I'm sorry, of the top of the windows. Um, don't worry about the trim yet. And you're also going to do the peak. So you're going to do five things right off the bat here. So now you'll notice that the house is going to be built somewhere in here. We just don't know where yet. So that's when this comes in. We go ahead and we do the left side and we do the right side just for now. Now we know what to trim. You do not want to use quick trim really in almost any of this elevation or any elevations that you're going to do and here's why. If I do a quick trim and I go to do this, you're going to get things left over. So you have to use a regular trim when you do that. Trim enter, click the top, left, right, and bottom, then hit enter and now it's going to trim around that box. Okay, so we're left with that. 
Next thing I want to do here is I want to bring the garage door down. So the garage door, I very conveniently gave you all of these things up here. These actually might be grouped also, so maybe just go ahead and take that and ungroup. And hopefully everything's separate now, okay? So you can go ahead and take these. This is an actual garage door and what it would look like, and it could be made probably by any company, but this one specifically is made by Anderson. And that's what all these windows are from also. So you see the doors, you see the windows, and all that good stuff. These are the exact ones you're going to put in there. Um, otherwise, you would have to draw those. So you don't. I don't want you guys to have to do that. All right, so here's the garage door. What you're going to do is you're going to type copy. And we're going to grab it from the top left corner. This is actually the top of the trim, so that doesn't count. This is the actual door. And you're going to bring this down into your area and put it right around here for now. We are then going to do a construction line from the left side of the garage and the right side of the garage coming down. Now we know where that door has to sit and what the height of that door should be. Remember the top one was the top of the windows. This one is the top of the garage door. So it actually makes sense right away to probably trim this because you're not going to see the foundation line where the garage is. Now we can take this, we move it from the top left corner again into this top left corner section. I do not need the left and right sides anymore because I can see that it is perfectly lined up between that and between the plan. So we're good. We do not need the top of the garage door anymore. That's not going to show as a line anywhere else. It's just a height. It's a reference for us to put our garage door. So that goes away. Keep the top of the windows, keep the rest of the foundation, and we move on. Let's say we want to do the front door construction line. Put one at the left of the skylight or side light I should say, right of the side light, left of the door, right of the door, left of the window, right of the window. So it's a lot of different lines, but again, I built this whole thing for you up top. So go up top here, find the living room front entrance, take that door, you can ungroup it if you want, it's a little bit easier to handle. Use copy. Same thing, this is trim out here, this is the actual door. Bring that down into this area. This is where the tops of the windows and doors are going to go and you'll notice that we see the area that it's got to go and we snap it right in there. Now I still need this line because I got other windows I got to draw but I don't need these. The door is in the correct place. This door does go a little bit below the foundation line. So what I would do is I think that's also the height of our uh, front porch. See how they're on the same exact area here? So what I would do is I'd go ahead and go up to this top one and go ahead and ungroup that if it's not already. I thought we did that. What I would do is I'd go ahead and copy this right off the bat here. This is still grouped. Hang on. Oops. When you do multiple groups, like I group the doors and I group the doors with the windows and then I group the whole thing. It just, there's many groups. So door, okay. So take the porch like this. Let's use a common point. I think I clicked something by accident up here. Take a common point and use copy. And you can just pick any point. It doesn't really matter. If, it, if you're going to do the bottom right of the skylight, that's fine. You just make sure that that common point is the same down here, bottom right. So now we got that in. So what I was going to point out is that notice how the door trim goes a little bit lower. So that's very common. Not, not all the time are you going to get a full three inches down there. So what we do is we just trim it off. All right, so now the door is good. It's in the right place. I'm going to do one more window with you, or maybe a double set of window here, um, because if you notice, we have, this is a TW26410, and that's a single one of them, and this is a double one of them. So I also made that easier on you. So you'll notice that in the plan up here, we have a double TW26410. Uh, so that's what we're going to take. I'm going to go with the construction line. I'm going to do left. Now, you can do these when it's a double like that, but I'll show you why you don't really need them. You just need the, the true right and the true left, okay? So let's go ahead and erase these two. And I'm gonna go up and I'm gonna grab my double window. Now, how do I know it's that window? Because looking at the plan, TW26410, okay? So you make sure that you grab the right one. Don't need the text up top. Um, doesn't look like it's grouped. Copy, top left of the window. Go down to your plan, top left, okay? So, I mean, it's really that easy. This is not hard at all. Erase the side lines. I'm going to get rid of my top line because I'm not drawing any more windows, but you would keep that there, okay? 
I also like to take my grade line and just extend that out a little bit because the ground does not end where the house ends, it just continues. Okay, so you put the lines out like that. So now this is the peak, it's the very top of the house, but you'll notice that the house is supposed to overhang the front and the sides, and you can see that in my elevation. It'll bump out inch, 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 right? And then it'll go up from there. So I need to figure out this trim situation, and I actually simplified that for you too. If you go into here, and you, you're gonna have to ungroup it again, sorry. Okay, let's see. Now we're good. If you go in here and you take this, but minus the text, okay? And you copy it, grab it from this point, and stay on the green line. That, it, that point there, I'm pointing to it, it says exterior walls, is the exterior wall. So when I go across, I'm gonna click green line and exterior wall intersection right there. But just remember that I did have that little line in there, so you don't need that. So if you want, you don't have to copy that over, that's up to you, but the reason why I did is because I want this one. This then gets trimmed, a regular trim, at this bottom line, you cut that off. So we're left with that. Then you do a fillet radius zero. Make sure that you click the top half of this line and this line. I think it's gotta be on screen, there we go. Maybe I missed that first one, just like that, okay? Now, the next tool, you're gonna do, I'm gonna shorten this because I don't want this to be near this. You're gonna do a stretch command. So if I go like this, you have to click exactly where I'm clicking. Click over here, and then click over here. It's a green box, and it's just selecting the end stuff. I'm gonna do the S command, which is stretch, and I'm gonna click this point right here. Now I'm gonna stay on the green line, slide this over until it hits that wall. You know, I should really make sure that I'm recording right now. Okay, good, that would've made me mad. Um, so that's like that, don't forget to erase the little line, okay? And again, we do a trim, we click this, we cut that off. Then we're gonna do fillet radius zero, click the top half of this, and click that, okay? That's pretty much it. I mean, the only other thing I want, really wanna show is I wanna show the hatch patterns, and that wasn't working yesterday when I was trying to do my video, so I'm actually doing it again, again, again. Um, so. Here you go, all you would do when you're done with the windows and doors and stuff, oh yeah, and you're gonna copy over the, well we copied the porch, but you're gonna have to copy the side one over. So if you go over here, I don't want you to make this, I just want you to take it, okay? So take this, copy, you can grab it from like this corner right here. Notice how like I actually cut my, um, my foundation in by one inch, so I wanna show you that too. But I'm gonna grab it from this bottom right corner of the house, and I'm gonna go down here, and I'm gonna put that right there. The red lines are going a little further because you should trim this off and one inch in from there, you should be drawing a line down. The other thing I forgot to mention is that you have to do an offset of four here and here. So this one is now correct. You do a match properties, you match the trim color, and you put that on this. That's how that should look because this is the corner of the house, that's just a piece of uh, siding trim basically. Over here I still got some trimming to do. I'm gonna cut that off, I'm gonna cut that off, and then I'm gonna move in by one inch and slide down, like that. Match properties, trim, and trim, okay? All right, so last thing here. So we go into the hatch pattern, we're gonna click in the area that the siding's gonna be in and you hit enter but well, you notice it's just a solid or whatever it is. You then go match properties again. This is the siding, and that's what I want to be siding. Boom. Same thing for the foundation. Hang on, my computer's gotta catch up. One, two, three, enter. You do them all in one shot, and they actually connect with each other. Match properties, that's the foundation, right there. Now we don't have to do it for this. This is the lattice or whatever for, see it says lattice under the decks, but we copied that down so that's fine. <clears throat> so literally this house is like three or four windows away from being done and it's really not that hard. It's just, it's understanding the concept of bringing things directly across, bringing things directly down. And if you can do that, then you're gonna be able to draw elevations with no problem. Obviously these can get more complex as you get a two story house or a three story house or you know, houses that have like columns and things like that. But for now, this is pretty simple and, and you know, I don't think you'll see any more unless you take another class in our set and you go further forward, which is 
obviously a great class, but it's only up to you if you kind of like this stuff, okay? So that's pretty much all I have for you guys, 15 minutes. I actually cut it down by two minutes from yesterday. I appreciate you guys watching. You outsiders, um, I do have comments turned on, so if you have a question, you can put that in there, but it, it has to be reviewed by me. So it's more for questions, not really for comments, um, unless you really think I'm doing something wrong. But uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and I will see you guys in class. Later.